Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful Lord's Day here at the Montville Reformed Church. I'm glad to see you all. As we begin worship, people of God, we remember that our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Amen. We have come to this place because we want to know God. We come in these moments because we want to know Jesus. Who anoints us with the resurrection, who shares our lives with us. We come with these people because we want to know the Spirit. Who changes us for life with God, so we may praise God forever. Welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. Our first hymn is number one. Praise ye the Lord, the Almighty. The lyrics will be on the screen. And as just a reminder, we will not be singing the hymns, but feel free to reflect on the words or even hum a few bars to yourself. Let us worship our Lord together. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for this day and for the chance to be together and to worship you. Yes, it's different, but the songs of our hearts are even louder than the songs of our lips. The meditations of our mind are a sweet and wonderful offering to you. So be blessed in this hour by us as we worship you and adore you as you have been a blessing countless times over and over and over again to us. Help us, we pray, to hear from you in this hour so that we are encouraged and inspired to shine brightly for you throughout the week. In your name we pray, amen. I don't have God's word with the children in there, but I have one in the hopper, so I'm going to use it. And this uh, is just based on what happened yesterday. And uh, my parents, throughout the quarantine, have uh, been coming by uh, about once a week uh, for what we call drive-by visits, although lately they've been sitting on their lawn chairs. Yesterday was a, a short visit because 
It was a little cold. And my dad often early on would pick up a little toy or a treat or something for the boys uh, when he would come by and visit. And guess what? Now whenever Pop-Pop comes by, they expect <laughs> Pop-Pop to bring something. In fact, it's gotten to the point that when anyone comes by, they expect something. And it got me thinking about how our relationship with God is. When God shows up in our lives, God always brings us wonderful things. He has good gifts for us. Scripture tells us that just as an earthly father loves his children, how much more then does God love each and every one of us? But, much like my children, sometimes we have expectations about what those gifts from God should be. And when they don't always meet exactly what we want. Like for example, Eli said, Pop-Pop, you still didn't bring me my giant robot? And I'm like, Eli, you can't just ask for stuff like that. Be grateful for what you've been given. But how often are we like that? God gives us so many good things in life, but we kind of want something else. So I'm, I'm learning a lot about my own faith and my own walk with God by being a father. And I hope that these lessons help inspire you and have you think a little bit deeper about the expectations we put on God and just how wonderful he is. With that, let us come to our prayer of confession. We come mindful of the fact that we have not loved with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength the Lord our God nor have we loved our neighbor as ourselves. And sometimes some of us haven't even loved ourselves the way that we ought. So let us come before a God who is quick to forgive and inspire and heal. Please pray with me the prayer of confession. Spirit of the living God, tell us God's mercy and faithfulness. Witness to us God's hope and justice. Where we have not followed Christ, direct our paths. Where we have not commanded your praise, rebuke our hearts. Come to us in this time of brokenness and defeat. Minister to us in this time of fear and chaos. Forgive us, O oh God, and remind us of your enduring love. Breathe your spirit upon our lives and make us holy. And one in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Please take a moment for personal silent reflection and repentance. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Amen. Hear the good news of the gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not come into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. So how do we live in response to this goodness? I said it only a few seconds ago. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is very much like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. On all these things hang all of the commands of God.
I'm pretty good with the not singing thing, but the Gloria Patri almost got me there. It's hard to hear that and not sing. As we come to our scripture today, we're in the book of Judges, chapter 4, verses 1 through 10. And I know as you hear these words, you'll be very glad that it's me doing the reading today. This is about the judge Deborah. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord now that Ehud was dead. So the Lord sold them into the hands of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hatzor. Sisera, the commander of his army, was based in Harasheth Hagoim. Because he had 900 chariots fitted with iron and had cruelly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years, they cried out to the Lord for help. Now Deborah, a prophet, the wife of Lapidoth, was leading Israel at that time. She held court under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites went up to her to have, her, to have their disputes decided. She sent for Barak, son of Abinoam, from Kadesh in Naphtali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go, take with you ten thousand men of Naphtali and Zebulun, and lead them up to Mount Tabor. I will lead Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his troops to the Kishon River, and give him into your hands. Barak said to her, If you go with me, I will go. But if you don't go with me, I won't go. Certainly I will go with you, said Deborah. But because of the course you are taking, the honor will not be yours. For the Lord will deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. There Barak summoned Zebulun and Naphtali, and 10,000 men went up under his command. Deborah also went up with him. People of God, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Aren't you glad I read that one? As we come to God's word, let's ask for his help and understanding. Let us pray. God, thank you for this day and the chance to be together and a chance to hear your word. As we read this passage and we listen and learn about Deborah and the state of Israel at Deborah's time, help us to see how the more things change, the more they stay the same. And the problems of the human heart are the same even thousands of years later. Help us, we pray, to learn from these examples and to be forever changed. In your name we ask this. Amen. The book of Judges is one of my favorite. It always was, which sounds weird because it's the book full of crazy names and crazier stories. And it's kind of a depressing book. But as a little kid, I had this really cool adventure Bible, and Judges is full of adventure stuff. So even though they watered it down, uh, because Judges is an incredibly violent book, I always found myself drawn to it. And part of it is because Judges echoes the human condition in a way that not all of the books of the Bible do. Judges is full of cycles. Remember where we left off last week? Joshua tells the people, who will you serve? As for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. And remember the, the people said, oh, we're going to serve, uh, serve God. And Joshua said, are you sure? Can you handle this? This is not going to be as easy as you think it is. And guess what? Joshua was right. Because he wasn't gone very long, and the people fell back into their old habits the old habits of worshiping the old gods, the gods of Canaan and the gods of Egypt. And every time this happened, a cycle would happen in the land of Israel. Things would be great. Whoever the leader was at the time would die. The people would start doing, going back to the old ways, the sinful ways. As a result, uh, God would allow enemies to come in and persecute them. This would happen for a while. 
And, but then God would have compassion on his people, as God always does, and send someone, uh, a judge in this case, to save them. And then that judge would lead for a while, and then they would retire or pass away, and the cycle continued over and over and over again. There's a phrase common throughout judges, and everyone did what was right in their own eyes, because there was no king. So these interim leaders were good, but there was no permanent leadership solution. Which leads us to our story today of Deborah. Deborah is the only female judge mentioned, but she's one of the, the most famous. She has one of the longest sections in all of Judges. And for the sake of, of time, I didn't have us read the whole chapter because to read the whole account of Deborah is two chapters, well over 100 verses. I encourage you to read Deborah 4 and 5 yourself later today. But I'll tell you what happened with the rest of the story. So Sisera is the commander. He's the, the leader. And when he sees the army coming, the battle ensues, and the Israelites are winning, they're overcoming. And so Sisera runs and hides in a tent of, of somebody nearby. And it just so happens to be a, a woman in the tent. And so he commands her, get me some water, I'm thirsty. Uh, get me something to eat. I'm going to take a nap. You know, losing a battle is very tiring work. Uh, so she, uh, and he doesn't know this, but she is married. She's not an Israelite, but she's married to an Israelite. And so he takes a nap, and just graphic, spoiler alert, uh, while he's taking a nap, she drives a tent peg into his temple, and therefore Sisera was defeated at the hands of a woman, a young woman at that. Told, I told you judges had some wild and crazy stuff. So what's the point of all this? Why, why is this story even in the Bible? It's strange. What's so significant about Deborah? And one of the things I think is so significant about the story of Deborah is in a time in which women did not have much respect in society at large, here's a woman leading the nation. She had the respect of, of this of this nation of these people, of these tribes, because she listened to God and knew God's word and spoke God's word with power. And she was fair and just, an incredible woman of character, so much so that the commander of the army won't even go fight without her being there. It just shows you how much they respected her. So often we think of the Bible as being archaic when it comes to its view on equality, but it's, it's so groundbreaking for its time and its day. Deborah is even mentioned in the Hall of Fame of People of Faith in Hebrews. Her, she was such an important, significant leader. And Deborah's story reminds me both her and, I'll give you her name, Jael. Jael is the woman who defeats Sisera. And it reminds us, this story reminds us of a really important lesson, one that we often forget. God can and does use anyone to accomplish his purposes. There is no one. Who would have thought that this young woman would defeat this general, this terrorist that had been terrorizing the people for 20 years? 20, year, 20 years of oppression. And the nation is saved by a girl in her tent. And the army of Israel is led by this incredible woman, Deborah. In your own life, sometimes we think when God calls us to think, when God is doing big things, no, God can't use me. Who am I? Doesn't matter. 
God will empower you and give you whatever you need for the task that he calls you to. And Deborah's story reminds us of that in such a powerful way. So instead of doubting when God calls, like Barak did, you notice uh, one, one of the, to me, one of the great ironies in this story is that the bravest people in this story by far are the women, <laughs> Deborah and Jael. They're the brave ones. Barak goes, I'll go, but only if you go. <laughs> I don't want to go by myself. Yes, it showed his respect for Deborah, but it also showed that he, had, he didn't have the same amount of faith that she did. So be like Deborah and be like Jael. When God calls, obey. Don't be like Barak, who doubts and needs reassurance. Because God, when he, needs, when he needs something done, he calls people to do it and gives people exactly what they need. So don't resist the call. And that's the amazing story of Deborah. Let us pray. God, in this story, we are reminded of the important truth of all of Scripture that you don't call the qualified. You qualify the called. And so help us, we pray, that when you call us into situations that we don't feel we are equipped to handle, that we're not sure what to do, remind us that if you lead us to it, you'll lead us through it. Help us, we pray, to have the faith of Deborah, to go wherever it is that you're leading, without fear and full of faith. In your name we pray. Amen. Our hymn of response will be All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name.
Are there any announcements this Lord's Day? Yes, we had uh, two trees taken down at the parsonage uh, into the woods behind the, the garage. Um, if anyone wants firewood, you have to cut it up yourself but, and take it away. But it's there and it's plenty there. So. But it's, it's a tour to hold it out. <laughs> it is very hard getting at it, but uh, if you want to do the exercise, it's there. And also, we're, we're still planning on sending out all the information for the congregational meeting, which will be done by electronic means or snail mail for those who don't want to do it electronically. Um, if you are on a committee or the chair of a committee and have not given me a summary uh, yet, your yearly summary that you would normally present at the, um, at the congregational meeting, please get that to me uh, as soon as possible. Um, otherwise, we're not going to be able to, to review it for this Sunday. We'll have to knock it back a week, but that's, that's okay. Um, I want everyone to get the information and actually be able to read it, digest it, and process it so people can make informed decisions. Uh, are there any other announcements? Yes. Hi. We have started the uh, collection for operation, the families for operation holiday. Thank you to those who have already signed up. If you have any trouble going online, I put up the um, cases outside. You can look on the way out and just put your name down and I'll sign you up. And gifts just need to be back December 9th because we need to get them um, December 11th. So, yeah. Great. Thank you. Are there any prayer requests this Lord's Day? Continued prayers for Jane, please. Continued prayers for Jane, absolutely, Doug. Anyone? Yes, Sabrina. Uh, first, for my uh, Uncle George Seki, who passed away last night in prison. Yes, a co worker of mine, the tax assessor, um, had an aneurysm and had passed away in Rockaway Township. Very sudden. <coughs> Let us pray. God, thank you for this day, and thank you that we could be together. And yes, it's weird and it's different, but we can still be together. We can still praise you. We can still worship you. I still get to see at least some of the face of uh, those who make up your church in this place. And for that, I'm grateful. Lord, uh, we pray for this church. We pray for all of its members. We pray for every family represented by this church, that you would keep them safe and hold them close in the palm of your hand, that you would watch over and protect them and those they love in these uncertain times. Lord, we pray for our nation as numbers seem to be going up. We thank you that the severity doesn't seem to be as bad as the first wave but we pray that our hosp for our hospitals and healthcare workers so that they're not beaten down even more or even more overrun. And so we lift them up. We lift up all of our first responders who have been working extra diligently for government officials, local board of health, so many supermarket workers, people that have just had to work so much harder and differently during this time for delivery personnel. There's no aspect of our life that hasn't been affected by this. And so, Lord, we pray that you would be with us, that you would help us. And so, Lord, we lift up the concerns of your church in this place. We continue to pray for Jane, that you would strengthen and encourage her that you would overwhelm her with your love and the love of your church in this place. We pray for Sabrina's uncle George and for his family as he has passed away. We pray for your comfort and your peace that passes all understanding, your peace that doesn't make any sense but helps us to be still and know that you are God. We pray the same for the family of Mel's coworker who also passed and passed suddenly we pray for comfort and peace for not only his 
family, but friends and, and co-workers as such a sudden shocking loss can be devastating. There are so many other needs and concerns in just represented by those gathered here, Lord, and we lift every single one of them, spoken or not, up to you. We pray for our country. We pray for our local leadership. We pray for all leaders, give them wisdom and discernment. And Lord, we thank you for your church that is the world over. That we're connected to brothers and sisters of every tribe, tongue, and nation, past, present, and even future. Your church is so incredible and diverse Thank you that we get to be part of it. And thank you for all that unifies us, mainly Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning will be We Have Heard the Joyful Sound. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious towards you. May God turn his face toward you and give you peace. Go in that peace. Amen.